www.mathstudio.biz.mathdvds.co.uk Higher Mathematics Lesson 20, Part 2 And we'll do a few problems that actually use ratios Joe mixes sand and cement in the ratio of 4 to 1 he uses five buckets of cement. How many buckets of sand does he use? Now I would suggest the easiest way is to actually set out what's being mixed and underneath it write the ratio. Make sure that the words and the numbers are around the same way. Sand, cement, sand, cement. Five buckets of cement, so that goes underneath there. And I think it's quite obvious that that's 5 1, so that's 5 4, so that's 20. So that's the ratio of 20 to 5, which is the same as 4 to 1, which is the ratio of the cements are going to be mixed. However, if you leave it like that, you're going to get no marks at all. Because the question does say, how many buckets of sand? Always make sure you answer the question that's been asked. Or else you don't get your marks. In a recipe by weight of flour to butter, so let's do the columns. You don't have to do this, but I find it easier and takes less thinking. How much butter should be mixed with 350 grams of flour? So if I put that underneath the flour side, make sure it goes under the right place, we're trying to find that out. So, let's assume it's not a calculator paper. That's been multiplied by 70. So if I multiply that also by 70, I'll get 140. And the answer is... This is my working out. There's my answer. This is a sort of easy question that somebody in the higher paper can get, not necessarily wrong, but lose marks because they don't give the answer clearly. They leave it in the mass of numbers. In a recipe, ratio of flour to butter, oh, it's the same recipe. It's 5 to 2. How much flour should be mixed with 50 grams of butter? So, 2 times 25 would be 50. So, 5 times 25 would be my missing number, which is 125. making sure that the answer is very clear so I get all my marks. I'm dead serious by the way. This is the sort of question where people in higher sometimes lose marks by just treating it with contempt rather than being sure they get it right and neatly done. Tom mixes a drink with orange juice, lime juice and lemonade. Orange juice, lime juice and lemonade. I'll write the whole word here, I think. In the ratio of 5 to 1 to 12. If he uses 30 millilitres of orange juice, that's there, how much lemonade will he use? So we're really only interested in this figure here. We're not interested in that at all. Setting it out like this, I'd like to say just makes it obvious. rather than reading the question and being a clever clogs and doing it in my head and giving the answer. So this is Tom again, still mixing his orange juice, his lime juice and his lemonade in the ratio of 5 to 1 to 12. If he uses 240 millilitres of lemonade How much orange juice would he use? 20 multiplied by that 12 gives me 240. Therefore, 20 multiplied by that 5 will give me the answer to the question.
And the last little question. A map has a scale of 1 to 25,000. On the map, the distance is measured A to B is 6 centimetres. What is it in kilometres as far as the real distance from A to B? So 1 centimetre would be 25,000 centimetres in the real world. So 6 centimetres is going to be this multiplied by 6. So that's the answer, that's the real distance. However, that's centimetres. If I divide that by 100, that'll make it metres. And if I then divide again by 1,000, that'll make it kilometres. So there you go. We'll chop off those three noughts and do 625s is 150. And that cancels, doesn't it? That uh, 1.5. There you go. I'll say again doing this exercise, it's not terribly difficult, is it? But in the exam, you will have some questions that won't be terribly difficult. You might even say easy. And those are the ones you want to guarantee you get right and make it clear what the answer is. Get all the marks going. At least that's my suggestion. Lesson 20, part 2.